I started drinking alcohol when I was about 14 and that's pretty mm-hmm. normal for my culture. Um, mm-hmm. And from the get go, I was kind of like a blackout drunk. Right. But I would be lying if I said it was always awful, like from the word go, like nobody says, oh, I'm just going to trash my whole life with alcohol and drugs. So, you know, there were some really funny times in my early drinking, like at 14, 15, some things are absolutely hilarious that would be absolutely mortifying when you're 23, 24. And I think um, at some point around then it, it turned on me. It was a bit like when you're out all night and you're dancing and you're having a great time in a club and then the end of the night comes and the light switch on, you know, and you look around and you're actually dancing with a weirdo and the space is just a horrible sweaty box and you're looking around and you've lost your friends and you're like, hey, like, what happened? And it was a bit like that. Um, Yeah, I would say late teens, early 20s, it became, it wasn't my friend anymore. Wow. That's pretty fast. So I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually sober from alcohol for uh, five years now, but I've been in like a 12 step program for 15 years. So like that's awesome. sobriety is like my favorite topic. Cause I, just like you, I struggled with alcohol addiction, like really hard, but I have to say, I mean, for you to get to that point so early, I mean, you know, late teens, early twenties, I didn't get sober for the first time until I was 28. I mean, I needed to get sober many years before that, Mm -hmm. but you know, late teens, early twenties, I was, you know, in college and like, I thought it was all fine. I figured I would, I partied too hard, but I figured I'd outgrow it. So what do you think like got you to that point so quickly? Well, I think like, I was a bit like you and in my sobriety journey and that's awesome snow, by the way. I didn't know that. And that's amazing. Like, congratulations. Um, I didn't get sober until I was 27. Um, but I think I packed a lot in, I think it went, it took me quite fast, um, from, yeah, that whole thing of like, yeah, I've got a bit of a problem, but it's not a problem, you know, like, it's just who I am to like suicide attempts, hospital, hospitals, arrests, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And you just get to a point, they say, don't they, a a point of desperation, a gift of desperation. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, it wasn't like a quick fix for me. I didn't just walk into a recovery situation and get sober. Um, But I was 26 when I actually um, made my first attempt um, at recovery. And uh, yeah, there were there were lots of points. If you if you look back, right, there's many points where I can think, I mean, even as 20 years old, like waking up from a really ropey one night stand. I remember thinking, I this isn't who I am, but you ignore it. Like I ignore it because by that point, I didn't know this, but that's the only thing I relied on to get me through life, right? So it's, it's not something that I wanna look at that I wanna stop, right? So it took quite a lot of those times before I finally, you know, made an attempt to change it. And uh, it was just luck really that after one of those times it was a particularly bad one I think I throw myself in a river or something like something like that and I was scared to be by myself um and a woman came just came came to my house my mum's friend uh me and my mum weren't even talking uh but my mum's friend came to my house and uh told me she was a recovered addict and alcoholic and that was the first time I thought you know all right, well, I don't want to be here, so I'll go with you. And that was kind of it, really. Did you have um, an idea of what you thought an alcoholic was before you got sober? Because I remember for me, you know, I, I started to get that inkling too that I had a problem like early on, you know. And again, like I said, I kept figuring like I would grow out of it, you know, because I was in college and like everyone was partying. And sure, I was. I was definitely worse than everybody, but I thought, you know, one day I'd wake up and I wouldn't want to, you know, smoke 10 foot or six foot bong loads um, yeah. and, you know, drink an entire bottle of gallo wine to myself and walk around my dorms pantless. Yeah. Um, Sucks. Yeah. But I just thought one day I would be like, I'd wake up and I'd be a grown up, and then I continued to get worse while everyone around me like seemed to grow up. And mm-hmm. I knew that I had a problem, but I didn't 
think that I was an alcoholic because in my mind, you know, an alcoholic was, you know, somebody who drank out of a paper bag under the bridge and I had all the things. I had a family, I had a career, I had friends and all that stuff. So I was like sure that I wasn't an alcoholic. Yeah. Did you, did you have a, the same kind of misconception? Yeah, I kind of did. Like I did a lot of uh, cocaine as well. Um, mm -hmm. And it was quite easy to imagine myself in a fancy rehab with like a, a, juice smoothie of some kind you know but it wasn't so easy like I didn't really even equate the word alcoholic to what I was like an alcoholic is one it's a man they're 50 plus years old um you know they've got the 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 trench coat on haven't they and they've got yeah the paper bag like with the bottle in it um and that would, you know, I just don't fit that mold. I remember like one of the first times I tried to, you know, sort myself out, I was going to this sort of um, uh, drug and alcohol center and I'd got in a cab for them to drop me off. And they said to me in the cab, you know, be careful because uh, there's loads of addicts there. And I, <laughs> you know, so like, you know, even at my worst, I didn't quite fit the mold of what an alcoholic look, looked like. So it was really difficult for me to, get my head around that one. Yes, I relate to you, yeah. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.